My name is Dr. Adam Farber, and I would like to talk to you today about platelet-rich plasma, also known as PRP. To understand what platelet-rich plasma is all about, you must first understand the composition of normal human blood. Normal blood includes both plasma and cells. Plasma, which comprises approximately 55% of the volume of blood, is the liquid component of blood and contains water and electrolytes. Cells compromise the other 45% of the volume of normal blood. The cells in blood include red blood cells, which are known for transporting oxygen, white blood cells, which help fight infection, and platelets, which assist in the clotting process if bleeding occurs. Platelets, however, also contain a variety of growth factors, which help the healing process when a tissue injury occurs. The idea behind using PRP in medicine is to harness the potential of the growth factors contained within the platelets. Platelets contain a variety of growth factors which promote increased blood supply to tissues which tend to heal slowly because of poor blood supply. These tissues include tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. This can result in accelerated and improved tissue healing. PRP is defined as a volume of plasma that has a platelet concentration above baseline. The creation of PRP therefore basically involves concentrating the platelets in a sample of normal blood. In order to create PRP, the first step involves taking a specimen of blood from the patient, much like when you go to get blood tests at your primary care doctor's office. Typically, one to two small vials of blood are required to create PRP. The sample of blood, shown in the image on the right, is then placed in a centrifuge machine for approximately 15 minutes. The centrifuge spins in circles at high speeds. During this process, the different components of blood separate into different layers based upon their density. As shown in the image on this slide, the centrifuge creates a vial which contains three distinct layers of fluid. The top layer is mostly water and plasma and has very few platelets in it. This is called the platelet pore layer. The bottom layer contains red blood cells. The middle layer, enclosed within the green circle in the image, known as the buffy coat, is rich in platelets and is isolated to create the platelet-rich plasma. The platelet-rich layer of the preparation, known as PRP, is then injected at the site of interest. The entire process typically takes less than 30 minutes and is performed in my office. PRP can be used to treat any process in which the body is slow to naturally heal itself. The most common uses for PRP in orthopedics include the treatment of tennis elbow and golfer's elbow, rotator cuff pathology, osteoarthritis of the knee, ulnar collateral ligament injuries of the elbow, patellar tendinopathy, and Achilles tendinopathy. Tennis elbow is a degenerative condition affecting the tendons on the outside aspect of the form at the elbow joint. Although steroid injections are a common form of treatment for tennis elbow, recent studies have shown that PRP is more effective than placebo or steroid injections for treating tennis elbow. Most doctors think that the results are similar for golfer's elbow, which affects the inside part of the elbow joint. Most rotator cuff tears of the shoulder are degenerative supraspinatus tendon tears that occur in an area of poor blood supply. Although PRP is not useful for treating complete, full thickness rotator cuff tears, PRP may be beneficial for treating for partial thickness tears which are not completely torn. Ulnar collateral ligament injuries of the elbow are commonly seen in throwing athletes, especially baseball pitchers. Historically, treatment for this injury involves surgical reconstruction which is typically associated with a 12-month minimum recovery process. Although PRP is not useful in the treatment of complete tears, recent studies suggest that PRP is beneficial for treating partial thickness ulnar collateral ligament tears. This allows athletes to avoid surgery in the lengthy post-operative recovery process. Osteoarthritis occurs when the cartilage that lines the ends of bones wears out. The image on the right shows the arthroscopic appearance of worn-out frayed cartilage involving the bottom part of the thigh bone in the knee joint. Severe osteoarthritis of the knee often requires knee replacement surgery, but treatments for mild to moderate osteoarthritis include steroid or visco supplementation injections, also known as lubricating fluid injections. Recent studies show superior results of PRP injections compared to visco supplementation or lubricating fluid injections, especially in patients under age 50 or with mild arthritis. Patellar tendinopathy is a common condition in jumping athletes. Patellar tendinopathy occurs when the patellar tendon in front of the knee joint, as shown in the picture on the right, becomes inflamed from overuse. Studies have shown that PRP is an effective treatment for patients with chronic patellar tendinopathy. In the ankle, there is an area of very poor blood supply 5 centimeters above the insertion of the Achilles tendon on the heel bone. 
As shown in the image on the right, this is a common location for degenerative changes of the Achilles tendon. PRP has been proposed as a treatment for Achilles tendinopathy. For further information about platelet-rich plasma or any of its uses, please feel free to contact my office at 480-219-3342 or visit my website at phoenixshoulderandknee.com. Thank you.